It's exclusive video of the suspect, Robert Card, doing what he liked best, playing cornhole. It was recorded at a recent cornhole tournament. There you go, Robbie. The video was taken at the bar where eight victims were killed last night. Card is believed to have targeted the cornhole players. On Facebook, a regular at the bar writes, I cannot believe we all played cornhole with that guy all last winter. I am so glad none of us were at the tournament tonight. Card was obsessed with cornhole. Here he is at a fundraiser last year holding a beer. Here's what we know about the 40 year old suspect. Card served as an army reservist for 20 years. Here we go again. This video is brought to you by Birch Gold Group, brought to you by Birch Gold Group. Listen, Vladimir Putin called the U.S. dollar's drop in dominance objective and irreversible as Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa formally agree to use local currency in trading instead of the U.S. dollar. It's the first shoe to fall. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, as demand of the dollar weakens, the buying power of the dollar weakens. That's why Birch Gold Group is busier than ever. Investors and savers are looking to harness the power of physical gold held in a tax sheltered IRA. You can too. Text Brandon to 989898 for your free info kit on gold with thousands of happy customers and A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and countless five star reviews. You can count on Birch Gold to help you navigate transitioning an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold. As the US dollar continues to receive pressure, from foreign countries, digital currency, and central banks. Arm yourself with information on how to protect your savings. Text Brandon to 989898 to claim your free info kit today. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications. Anytime I go live, make a video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. Like this video. Comment this video. Share this video. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to give my opinions about what went on in Maine just yesterday. As I landed here in Pittsburgh, I'm speaking at the University of Pittsburgh. The speech will already be over by the time y'all see this video. Um, but I heard the news. It was reported all over social media that a gunman went into a bowling alley and a bar in Maine in a very small town. I think it's called Lewiston. About 40,000 people live there. So it's a small town. Uh, U.S veteran. I will consider him a veteran. He spent over two decades in the military reserve. And so this guy decided to go in and just shoot up as many people as he can with an AR-15. That's the gist of what happened. Currently, as I'm making this video, which is about, let's see, I'm making it about 4 p.m. East Coast time. They haven't caught the guy. He's at large. This is another incident where it's so unfortunate. I just could only imagine what the police officers are dealing with, what the families are dealing with, what the wounded are dealing with, what the critically wounded are dealing with, and finding out that their kid that they allowed to go to a bowling alley is no longer uh, coming home. And it's a terrible situation. You know, thoughts and prayers are with the family. And I can say that until I'm blue in the face because we can do policy and thoughts and prayers at the same time. Some people don't believe we can do that. But that's pretty much the gist of what happened. But one important thing that needs to be noted in in preparing to fix these things is that this gentleman had a history of mental illness. Last summer, Card was hospitalized for two weeks at a mental facility after hearing voices and threatening to shoot up an Army Reserve base in Maine. Psychiatrist Keith Abloh says those voices seem very real to disturbed people like Robert Card. It may not even be his plot. It's some recording, if you will, playing in his mind. And he may be driven to keep killing because he's told to do so. Card's sister-in-law says he recently started wearing hearing aids and he thought he could overhear people at the bowling alley talking about him. The suspect's brother spoke to CNN. He says the family has actually been texting him, reaching out to him, telling him to surrender. Former Marine Intelligence Officer Hal Kempfer says Card is skilled at evading capture due to his military training. Frankly, for some of the officers that will encounter him, he may be much better trained and, in fact, better armed than they are. He may have planned, and this would be a very standard military thing, he may have an escape and evasion plan on how to get out. Card is 5 feet 11 inches. He's 230 pounds and studied engineering at the University of Maine. Like lots of people in the state of Maine, Card was also an avid boater and fisherman. 
Until he's caught, the entire state and beyond remain on edge. This gentleman had a history of mental illness. He had been committed to a hospital for mental illness. He had already made threats to go and do a mass incident. How are we not taking the laws that are already on, book, on the books and applying them? How are we not adhering to policies that already exist that could prevent these things from happening and applying them? I just wonder, are people only interested in taking your guns and allowing these things to happen so they can have justification for it? I don't want to believe that's true because that's a very radical way to think. But my God, what? how, how much... How many of these shootings can be prevented because people know these individuals are ill? They know these individuals are sick. They know these individuals have made commentary, have made in innuendo, have made inferences that they were going to go and do a mad situation. These people are hearing voices, which the gentleman that did this, he was hearing voices in his mind. How do we not understand that when we see signs and symptoms of people that could potentially do heinous things, that we need to address them. Let me talk about two other things, because there's the concept of red flags, red flag laws. There's two sides to this, or three sides. There's the ignorant, and then there's the overzealous, and then there's the one in the middle that said we need to be logical about red flag laws. What red flag laws are and what they are not. Now, what they are, what they are not, and what they could be. Let me just frame it like that. For me, as a former police officer, we had red flag laws in the state of Arizona. And they applied to people who were committed to the hospital for being a danger to themselves or others. Somebody who's, you know, who did something in an act of terrorism or anything of that nature. They had to be committed to the hospital. We had the authority to go into their house, get a warrant and take all their guns. Now, when they're better and they're back to functionality and they're on their meds or whatever the case may be, they can come in and get their guns back. But we had a policy where we take their guns. It happened. We had a veteran who was having PTSD real bad. He was low crawling in his backyard with an AR-15. He thought he was at war. He was hearing voices and all these other things. Once we finally got him into custody after we did a SWAT call out, we were able to take all his guns. And the dude ended up getting his life back together and he got his guns back and his job back. So I think red flag laws, when applied appropriately, are necessary. And then I think the abuse of red flag laws is what people are trying to avoid. So we don't avoid red flag laws. We just avoid the abuse of them, which means that you have to limit red flag laws to a particular criteria that's written into federal law and also into municipal law. Therefore, the federal law will trump a, municipal, a municipality if they're trying to red flag you because who you voted for. You know, th those are the things that we can avoid, but we need to have red flag laws similarly to what I'm describing, because we have a person like this guy who shouldn't have had a gun. And also, I think we should implement the fact that you get flagged if you do something like this. So you make inferences that you're going to shoot some up. And when they have evidence of it, that they flag your name and your social security number. So when you go to a gun store, the gun owner uh, of the store has the right to know, OK, this person has made references to this. This person has been to the hospital for mental illness. I can choose whether or not I want to sell that to that person or not. Because you got these people at the gun store, a person walk in, they don't know him from Adam. He has no history or no record. They sell him a gun that ended up resulting in the, in the murder of 50, 60 people. And then people want to go sue the gun manufacturer. It's like, no, nah, if, if we got inf information from government systems that this person is not well, there needs to be some notifications and places to give people options. And I'm not saying right away we should say you can't sell them a gun. It's, you, you can make that decision on your own. But most good gun owners, good gun stores don't want to sell a gun to somebody that they know is going to hurt other people. It's not good for business and, and, and it's not good, um, you know, for the community. So I think we need to implement those. We shouldn't be afraid of red flag laws because somebody didn't articulate the red flag law being something that it is not. Also, let me just address this one thing about uh, taking the guns away. It's never a good policy and it never will work to try to remove every AR-15 from the United States of America. It's not going to happen. It doesn't work. I don't know why we keep talking about it. Even if somebody would have killed me in a situation like this, I still don't believe that every AR-15 should be taken out of the hands of American people. One is unconstitutional. Two, it ain't never going to happen. Three, it ain't never going to stop people who want to do the wrong thing.
There's hundreds of millions of guns in America circulating as we speak. There's millions of AR-15s that are in possession of people in America. So trying to get those off the street, trying to get those from American citizens, thinking you're going to give them fair value for a $3,000 AR that they bought with an optic on it and, and, and five, 6,000 rounds of ammo that they had to pay for. Like you're not going to be able to recover that cost that people are enduring. That's uh, that's in, unfair to the American citizen violating their constitutional rights and putting them in a financial burden and making them susceptible to when if we have a an event where somebody like they did in Hamas want to fly into America, we we sitting there with our pants down. And it's only one officer to every thousand people. So we finna we we gonna get murked. Instead of if a person go to parachute into America, you gotta not you gotta have you got the army, you got the police, and you got the average citizen that will mow you down. And that's the way it should be in the United States of America. That's how we remain, we remain free for thousands of years to come. So I think that is never a solution to do that. And, and let me just give you this last caveat, and I'm getting off, the, I'm getting off this video because i got to speak at the university here in a minute. Let me give you this caveat. If you go and, and, and try to promote policy, you can do the red flag thing like this. You try to, and there's already systems in place. But if you try to go promote policy right now that says that you're going to get rid of AR-15s, there's a period of time that it has to go to the House, the Senate, and it has to reach the desk of the president, and somebody got to sign it. Now, while you start alluding to the fact that you're going to remove the, the ability for people to have their Second Amendment rights, people are going to buy so many AR-15s and ammo that it's going to be out of control. It's going to be absolutely out of control. There's going to be no way whatsoever of navigating that. People are going to buy every AR-15 that exists. Um, you know, I got distracted for a minute because I see helicopters flying around Pittsburgh, downtown Pittsburgh right now. And they probably are searching for that shooter as we speak. I see helicopters flying all around. They're probably trying to see if that dude made it from Maine all the way down to Pittsburgh. Now, I haven't looked on a map, but I think he got a little bit to go before they get Pittsburgh. I hope. And I hope that he don't go to the university where I'm speaking at. Lord forbid. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just thought I'd throw that out there. It's a very sad situation. I'll keep you guys updated. Hopefully, they find the guy. But that is funny. They do have helicopters flying around downtown right now. I'm, I don't know if it's because of him or what, but um, that's very interesting. They found his car, so either he tactically escaped by boat or he, you know, jumped in the thing and killed himself. Uh, either way it go, I, I, I hope that they stop this guy before he end up hurting other people. And that somebody that know him would know, okay, this is the bowling alley that he frequents, or this is somewhere else that he may go next. He has family in Pittsburgh, you know, so we'll see. But God, God bless you guys. I'll see you on the next one. I'm praying for the family. Y'all pray as well. I'm out.